question in a couple of ways today. Uh, first of all, I don't, uh, I'm not going to be feeling, feeling very comfortable standing here on stage and moving with so many of those balloons floating around. Um, so I'm going to be speaking from here. Uh, secondly, I'm not going to be showing you tons of data. Uh, a lot of my slides uh, are going to be about you know one visual that has a central theme and then a point that I will talk around. Uh, thirdly, um, I'm going to be talking about something that has become almost a passion for me and uh, for the company that I work for, uh, that is uh, TNS uh, Research Limited. And uh, what we've been doing over the last several years is putting a lot of time uh, and uh, a lot of our personal time into understanding what is uh, called traditional trade or unorganized retail. So. Um, what we've been doing actually is um, teams of us have been going out, spending time on shop floors, um, interacting with shopkeepers, um, going back to their homes with them, talking to them about their lives, their businesses, and the way they run their business, trying to get a glimpse of the native intelligence that drives um, the way retailing is done uh, in the nine million odd uh, Kirana stores or traditional trade stores that you see in this country. And what we do then is try and use um, elements of that native intelligence in advising our clients who happen to be, you know, uh, modern, uh, the so-called modern retailers or the organized uh, trade businessmen um, chains, and um, also manufacturers or marketers who are looking at, um, you know, developing the category or developing their brands, both in traditional trade and in modern trade. So what we do actually is our starting point is slightly different. Our starting point is the traditional trade business. Um, we start with the retailer, move into the store, understand shoppers in the traditional trade outlet, and use those principles to actually guide how a category or how a category experience can be created in a modern trade setting. Um, what I'd like to do today is um, talk to you about 10 myths, so to speak, uh, that we need to debunk and um, you know, weeding out the inefficiencies in the system. Um, we can talk about you know, I mean, the back end, the front end and all of that, but at, at the end of the day, um, that sort of growth is only going to come if you really understand what it is that you know, your traditional trade retailer is doing so well that makes people who can afford to shop in modern retail, people who have a modern retail store next to their homes, makes them still go back to a traditional trade retailer and shop there more frequently. Now, just for those of you who are interested in numbers, some of the work that we did a couple of years ago, uh, two years ago, indicated that uh, close to 85% of the so-called SECAs, which is, you know, um, presumably the slightly more affluent of uh, the Indian classes, tend to still shop at traditional trade uh, for certain kinds of categories even though they have access to modern trade stores and do visit modern trade stores. Um, it also tells us that close to 50% of what we call the SECCs, or the slightly less affluent um, shoppers, tend to not just shop at traditional trade stores, but also shop at modern trade stores. What that tells us about India is that unlike the rest of the region, where you know there is a correlation between affluence, we moving up in lifestyle and where you shop at, in India, both these you know, formats, what we call the modern and the traditional, are going to coexist. And both are delivering slightly different things um, at one end, and in some categories, <coughs> completely different experiences. Um, and so real growth will really come if we are able to take these inputs or these elements from the traditional trade um, uh, store and shopper dynamics and see how we can weave that into the story that we tell in the modern trade outlet. So I'm going to be talking to you about 10 myths. Um, there are several more such myths that exist, but I've chosen 10 myths. Um, I must confess that you know these myths are not really organized in any particular way, uh, because I wasn't really sure about what the profile of the audience today would be. So if you're retailers, and if you're modern trade retailers, then you'll find some uh, inspiration here perhaps in how to create a category experience within the store. If you're brand marketers, then you'll perhaps find some experience in how to actually leverage the traditional trade experience better for your brands. 